So guys, today I'm going to take you through some core exercises, more for stability versus having abs that show, okay? There's a big difference. Abs that show are there to, for uh, aesthetic appearance versus the core stability or core strength, which is actually going to transfer into the rest of your training and make you stronger overall, better posture, better for life, better for longevity, get rid of the bad back. So first of all, I'm just in this hanging position to explain the movement of the core more than anything. So if we're bringing our legs up and down, right? We're using our hip flexors mainly to do the movement. If you do loads and loads of these, you might feel some sort of lactic acid build up in the stomach, but it's simply from the hip flexor goes from here to here and can cause some lactic acid building up in here. You might think you're building your core. This transfers into a lot of movements that you generally see done in the gym for core exercises. It's actually using the hip flexor rather than the ab muscles. So your actual core does this type of movement. It's only a small plane of movement versus the hip flexor, which is a really large plane of movement. So, for example, you can do this movement and use your core, but you're gonna be doing more of a movement with your bums tucking up in the air, rather than actually using your legs. So you can, have, you can do something called toes to bar, where you're actually coming all the way up, and that's gonna be using your core muscles really well. So a common mistake of core exercises is somebody just banging out loads of crunches and that's it and having no real progression within the training. Core training is, is, a, is a lot about progression, it's about getting better over time. So I'm going to take you through a lot of exercises now, I want to talk you through them and gradually get better at all these exercises. I'll try and put them in some sort of order from easy to hard, but basically as you can do these exercises, get better, spend more time in it. Um, spend more time in the movement, do more reps in the movement, or become more stable in the movement. Okay, a good place to start is getting a band, getting someone to hold it for you, maybe ask one of the personal trainers, or do it yourself, and understanding this belly button in movement. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing the anti-toilet muscles, yep, the ones that stop you from weaning and pooing, I'm squeezing them really tight, and I'm pushing my belly button into the floor, okay? So what this is doing is actually holding the band in the floor. This is the first progression, this is the first thing to learn to be able to do that. Now, what you'll find is if you're not actually squeezing your belly button in and you're using your core muscles to contract, the band will just flick out like that and you won't, you won't be holding it. That's what happens to most people when you first do this movement. So, get the band underneath you, get yourself set up, belly button in, squeeze them muscles, the anti-toilet muscles, have everything, everything nice and tight, and then just try, first of all, lifting your feet up and pushing your feet out like this while keeping this nice and tight, keeping them muscles squeezed in the core, once you've got that, afterwards, lift both feet up and try to bring your feet out and in. And you can see I'm able to hold it in. And that's the first part you're gonna learn. If you're not doing it properly or when you get tired, what'll happen is it'll flick out just like that. Okay, so next thing to learn is once you understand this core tightness and you've progressed from that movement, I'm gonna be doing something called the banana rock. So I'm actually holding my core tight, my belly button's in, and I wanna just rock forward and back. Okay, and I'm keeping that nice and tight, see how many of them you can do. You can do this for time, say 30 seconds if you can, a minute if you can, or just keep going. Okay, so another good core exercise is to get on all fours. We want to be squeezing our belly button in and to the ceiling. We want to be squeezing the anti-toilet muscles, efforts nice and tight, pushing our palms into the floor as much as possible, nice neutral head, and try to lift one leg all the way up, straighten it out. That's the first progression of that movement, but while you're keeping this nice and tight. So what we don't want to see is this happening if the arch of the back and lifting. That's not using the core muscles at all, it's more just allowing the spine to just relax and it's putting loads of pressure on the back. So while you're doing the movement, core nice and tight, solid, solid base, okay? So once you've got that, you want to try and do one arm, one leg. So again, not this movement, nice and tight, tight core, squeeze the anti-toilet muscles, one leg, one arm, nice and straight. So another awesome core exercise is to get into the all four position, squeeze the core, keep that nice and tight, squeeze the anti-toilet muscles, lift yourself up and actually come into a crawling position. So this on its own for some people is really hard because the core will let go and you'll end up doing this. That's not what we want. We want the core to be nice and tight pushing our palms into the floor, creating a solid base. So first of all, just sit in this position, get used to it, get used to squeezing the anti-toilet muscles, stop yourself weighing and poo muscles basically, keep that nice and tight and get used to this position without your back relaxing 
we want that core nice and tight. And you're almost thinking about dragging your hands towards yourself while you're doing the movement. So the next progression of the, of the crawl position is to actually crawl. So I'm not allowing my back to relax, I'm keeping everything nice and tight, and I'm actually crawling really slowly. Once you first do this, you'll realize you'll have a lot of weaknesses within your shoulders, within your core, and you'll find it really difficult if you've never done it before. So this is a quite advanced movement. So until you've learned how to do this, just take your time, try and do five forward, five back. So once you've got this crawling nailed, what you can do is actually crawl, but keep your feet still and have you, and stretch your body out. So now what's happening is my core's really, really squeezed. I'm actually getting to a long, an elevated position and then crawl back in with your feet while keeping your core nice and tight. You can also do it the other way. Okay guys, so once you've nailed the crawl, you want to be doing the crawl with one leg, one arm at a time. So I'm going to go through the movement now so you can see it. So once you've nailed all the other exercises and you're great with your core strength, you can advance it by putting some weight on your back. I wouldn't recommend this until you've really got it nailed on the crawl and you can do it so slow without any effort. Once you've got that, you can go into the crawl position and you can crawl real slowly again, keeping the core nice and tight. So guys, once you've nailed everything else and you want to move to a higher progression, if you can do this without a band, please tag me because I can't do it yet. But with the band, it's going to help reduce the load. So basically, we want to be activating them core muscles, stretching all the way out, stretching all the way in. And you can do this for reps as well. So guys, that's the core stability exercises covered. There's loads of them, there's loads of variations. Just feel free to go and explore, but really it's about activating the core, sucking the belly button in, keeping that tight while you're doing the movement. It's gonna transfer into everything else you do in the gym, your squats, your deadlifts, overhead pressing, anything, even going as far as picking up the shopping and picking up things when you're in daily life.